The quality served in each ice cream bowl or cone is what customers can't get enough of, and the secret to this is hidden in the recipe. The ingredients used during the production process are rather basic for a product as interesting as ice cream. These include eggs, sugar, and the most important one, milk, but not just any milk. At Ben & Jerry's factories, two kinds of milk products are used to produce ice cream, heavy cream and condensed skim milk. While these three ingredients are basic, some other ones are added later in the production process like additives, flavoring, and special food products like chocolate chips, coconut chips, etc. Of course, these vary depending on the flavor and variant of the ice cream being produced. Now, let's see how these ingredients are joined together to form the delicious Ben & Jerry's ice cream. The first step is to prepare the basic ingredients, and the first one we're going to talk about is the milk. Ben & Jerry's is a large company that manufactures mostly dairy-based products, meaning they use an insane amount of milk per day. So, for the sake of cost and reliability, the company has its own livestock farm where cows are reared and milked in accordance with their milk demands. This milk extracted from cows is then taken to the dairy, where it's processed, sterilized, and made into several milk products, which are needed for the factory's ice cream and yogurt production. So for ice cream production, the dairy sends over gallons of condensed skim milk and heavy cream, which are used in the first step. From the dairy to the factory, the milk is transported in huge tanks with controlled temperatures of about 2 degrees Celsius, and once they arrive, it's drained from the tanks into a huge stainless steel mixer using long pipes. Depending on the flavoring, several cracked eggs are added in, as well as pure granulated sugar and other natural ingredients. Once all the ingredients are in, the steel container is closed with the seal that has an inbuilt rotary blade, which stirs them all together at high speed for about six to eight minutes. After being mixed so thoroughly, the mixture becomes thicker and then is ready to undergo the next production stage. Next, the mixture is pasteurized to sterilize it and kill off any bacteria or pathogens that may be present in the milk. This process is done by transferring the mixture from the mixer into a pasteurizer, which heats it up to a high temperature of around 82 degrees Celsius, which is then enough to kill whatever pathogens may be present. After a few minutes of heating, the mixture is taken to another machine called the homogenizer, which ensures that it is consistent and smooth all around. The mixture is transported from the pasteurizer to the homogenizer at incredibly high pressure through small pipes, and the pressure in the homogenizer ensures that the fat present in the milk is completely broken down. This prevents the fat molecules from clumping together when the mixture is cooled again in the following production processes. From the homogenizer, the smooth, even mixture is transported back to the pasteurizer for cooling this time. This allows it to achieve some level of thickness, preparing it for the next stage, which is flavor blending. The mixture is taken to the tank room, where it is kept in metal tanks for about 6 to 8 hours, and this time, allows for the flavor of the mix to improve and for the flavor of individual ingredients to blend with each other. After sitting for hours in the tank room, the mixture, which is now thicker than it was originally, is pumped into the flavor vats, where different kinds of flavors are added. Once inside the vats, different flavors are added to the mixture, including chocolate, strawberry, vanilla, mint, etc. After pumping several gallons of flavors, the vat mixes this new combination together, and at this point, the ice cream is almost ready to be packaged. However, it must be frozen first. The huge tanks of ice cream are sent into large continuous freezers, which can accommodate several gallons per hour. The freezer's temperature is as low as 40 degrees Celsius below zero, and ammonia is used as the freezing agent. Inside each freezer, it is ensured that air is passed over each gallon of ice cream, and after freezing for at least an hour, the mixture brought out of the freezer now has a consistency of plain ice cream. After freezing, the ice cream is ready to be packaged in plastic cups. However, for those with chunks, there's one more step to go through. Some ice cream variants have fruit pieces, cookie chunks, or other chewy or crunchy food substances in them, and this addition is made at a machine called the chunk feeder. Several gallons are pumped through the machine while the fruits or chunks are loaded onto a hopper at the top of the chunk feeder. This hopper allows pre-measured amounts of chunks to fall into the frozen ice cream, 
And afterwards, the portion of ice cream that's been served with chunks is sent to a blender which allows for the even distribution of these chunks. Now, it's time to package the ice cream. On the way to the filling machine, the ice cream passes through a machine called a variegator, which adds small amounts of caramel fudge and peanut butter to it before it is pumped into the filling machine. Here, already branded cups are filled with pre-measured quantities of ice cream, and about 120 cups are filled per minute. Next, the machine seals them and sends them to another machine, which inscribes expiration dates on each cup. Before being stored and shipped, the newly made ice cream cups are frozen again, this time using a machine called the Serial Hardener. The Serial Hardener has a conveyor system, which transports the ice cream to and from parts of the machine with temperature ranging from negative 23 to negative 60 degrees Celsius. After two to three hours, the ice cream cups are removed, boxed, and sent off to retail stores worldwide.